All Things Data podcast. In the spirit of Daniel Kahneman, Peter Diamandis, and Google Moonshots, brings together leading data scientists, technologists, business model experts, and futurists to discuss how to utilize, harness, and deploy data science and data-driven strategies to enable digital transformation. The hosts are Dr. Manjeet Rege, Associate Professor of Data Science, and Dan Yarmala, Director of Business Development of IoT and Data Science. The podcast is produced by the Graduate Programs of Software of the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay, welcome to the All Things Data podcast. I'm Dan Yarmulak, and I have my guest, Steve Bishada. Stephen is the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Cloud Data Services for Siemens PLM Software, a business unit of the Siemens Digital Factory Division. In this role, Mr. Bishada leads the MindSphere IoT business. MindSphere is the cloud based open operating system from Siemens that connects real things to the digital world and provides powerful industry applications and digital service to drive business success. Prior to this assignment, Steve served as Senior Vice President of Industry Strategy, responsible for capturing vertical industry-specific PLM requirements and best practices, defining the company's industry strategy and solutions and providing industry packaging and delivery across the segments. Steve, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, Steve, we're on the heels of this great big announcement with AWS and Siemens Partnerships. It's very exciting. Can you tell the audience what that partnership is and the genesis behind the partnership? Yeah, I think one of the things that we really wanted to do with uh, essentially an IaaS provider is make sure that we had a scalable high-performant platform that was essentially very secure, obviously end-to-end security, um, was important. And so when we looked at um, all the possibilities, we ended up with an AWS or an Amazon first strategy, which said they're really the best player from a scalability and performance perspective, along with they have a rich set of capabilities around analytics that will help us from the perspective of offering a wide variety of solutions to um, everybody from your average developer to your larger partners that are building sets of applications. This was the intention. And so at reInvent, we announced this relationship and, and solidified it. And I think that globally, it will be very powerful. So in essence, this is Siemens not only making a strategic choice because of scalability and reliability, but it's an open invitation for the developer community to engage with Siemens. No, that's right. And, and I, and, you know, you use the word open and uh, it's uh, kind of a trigger word for me because one of the big changes for Siemens is something that we've done in, on the PLM side for a long time, and that is open up our platform. So that's to say that um, anybody can build applications. Those applications could look similar to something that we've brought to the marketplace, or they could differentiate in a specific way, and that's okay. And it invites the developer community to join that because uh, a lot of these individual developers have certain skills, certain knowledge sets, depending on what their experience base is, and they can uh, bring innovative solutions to the marketplace. So we want to open up to that. And that's a big change from a cultural point of view. I think from a, a Siemens perspective, it says, okay, you know, here it is. You're going to be able to not only leverage our assets and uh, intellectual property, but you'll also be able to leverage your partners and the development community at large. Right. Can you tell me a little bit about your history, Steve, and kind of communicate what PLM is from a Siemens perspective and how that helps shape your, you know, strategy and opinion and philosophy about MindSphere, because I, I see the connection, but I think it would be right. interesting for the audience to understand your holistic view there. Yeah, I think um, if you really go back to the foundation of Team Center, uh, Team Center was, you know, essentially uh, initially a PDM. So had product data management, had the basic applications of change management, security, and visualization, those kinds of things. So that, that's kind of where everybody started. But we had a vision then, and our vision was to have a product lifecycle management platform 
that you could then apply applications to to be able to address the total product life cycle. And so that evolution then kind of continued. And um, I spent uh, roughly 12 years in Team Center. And I think we transitioned it to the number one global platform for PLM. I think a lot of the, your big complex manufacturing, especially discrete manufacturing companies, all really have a strong uh, knowledge about Team Center or they're currently using Team Center it became quite an evolution. Now, in that process, of course, what we learned is, you know, the expectations of a platform. In other words, what did people just naturally expect because you use the word platform? And then when we talked about applications, you know, how similar or different was this from the Team Center days? And Team Center was an on-premise product where MindSphere can be a public or private cloud solution. Now, we will eventually, um, late next year, do an on-premise uh, component, but for the most part, it's public or private cloud. And the reason for this is really simple. If you're a company and you have one plant, that's you know one scenario, but most scenarios are companies with multiple plants, and our enterprise customers have maybe 40, 50, 60 plants globally. And so you want to have a solution that is able to look at the total asset base and be able to see correlations and apply analytics and applications to those scenarios, because that's where the real insight into what's going on occurs. That's what I'm starting to notice, that it was just through uh, familiarity about the Siemens solutions that when I see the MindSphere solution is a little bit of an extension in a way to PLM. And I didn't catch that before. And that leads to our next subject of digital twins. We have the digital twin, the production twin, and the performance twin. And can you tell us a little bit about those products from your perspective? Yeah, Dan, thanks. I mean, um, I, I do appreciate the comment on extension from Team Center because I do think that, uh, well, uh, and we certainly plan it to be an extension from the PL products as a whole, as well as um, the Siemens products, for example, our um, automation PLC base. There's just a natural extension to want to look at that across a company to be able to draw correlations. And of course, the higher order applications that you might do. Now, I, I want to be specific about application types because I think today people are excited about applications that do simple things, some applications that can be built in four or five, six months. This is unlike PLM, of course, where you have big, complicated applications with interrelationships. And so, these things tend to be a little bit heavier and take a little longer to develop. In MindSphere, we accommodate that entire spectrum. Everything from, hey, all I want to do is manage my asset base across these number of plants up to I want to do a digital twin. And so when we talk about digital twin, the beauty is that leverages all of our strengths. So when I say strengths, I mean the fact that we have access to data across the life cycle. So if we're talking about the digital twin of the product, we're talking about mechanical, electrical, and software. And of course, with the acquisition of Mentor, that made the digital twin of the product extremely robust because now you have the detailed information of the total design of all the components of the product. So then what you can do is simulate that product and create a model about how that design performs or will perform when you finally build it. So that digital twin of the product becomes very, very strong based predominantly on software that, that we provide in the PL products. Then as we move over to the digital twin of production, we have really a similar thing where we have our manufacturing-based products, manufacturing uh, planning, manufacturing operations management, the mom products. And what we have there is we can then close the loop from a manufacturing perspective on the manufacturability of the design and the uh, beginning of the planning 
of the facilities that are going to be required in order to uh, to execute. And then finally, the digital twin of performance, meaning everything about the operational nature when this product hits the field. And so imagine for a second, it's just a simple example, is you have a, a wind turbine deployed in a wind farm, and through IoT, you're seeing an anomaly, so a, a vibration. And so you can then say, well, okay, what was that vibration when that wind turbine was shipped? What was it intended to be? So you can go look at the design, you can look at the simulation, and you can say, okay, here's the difference. What does that mean? And over time, through machine learning, you can say, okay, a vibration that's this much out of spec tells you you need to go out, do a service within 90 days, and bring these three parts which really kind of revolutionizes the business. And it really came from integrating all the information data sources that we capture and that we persist and combining that with some intelligence. Maybe to the customer, he sees a dashboard or she's a, she sees a dashboard that shows that there's been an anomaly, what device the anomaly has come in on and what that recommendation might be. This has been employed internally at Siemens for years, and now we hear buzzwords like machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. But I found that Siemens has been plugging away at these things for decades, productionized data sets and models of the feedback loop, and they're looking at their product management holistically like that for many years. So when people talk this buzzword, the way I parse it out is like, well, They've actually been doing it. They've been doing it internally to industry-specific segments. So yeah. uh, it's no easy task, and you guys did a great job. One of the things that I think would be interesting, you know, Steve, to, to mention is your industry expertise, and, and you rolled this out for PLM. So can you tell me, you know, the verticals you're going into, any segments that you want to mention that you're really emphasizing? I really, uh, I think the whole industry verticals is really where technology-wise, we talked about what our strategic advantage is. I want to see automotive test data. What do you have there? I can, through a search mechanism, do that, and you can see then what our offerings are in automotive test data. So just a, a, you know, a quick, easy example to get the idea that the whole idea is to, pro is to provide a structure by which we can build and submit applications and that our partners can as well. And of course, the back end side of this is very few companies that I talk to have really the right people or enough people to kind of make this transformation. And so when, when it's required, we can provide digital services that help us and help the customer realize what their vision is for IoT. I think you're right, and this is what, to me, when I look at the digital twin offering and looking at that as, as a logical extension of PLM, it's a much more holistic view of connectivity and feedback, meaning this is not just connecting assets and collecting data. This is actioning it in a very, very vertical, like it's solving problems, and it has to solve those problems with all that information and deep domain experience, you've done it internally. Now it's, it's opening up that fantastic solution and, and knowledge to the market. Right. It's going to be an exciting 2018 for Siemens. Any other interesting news that you could talk about on the horizon or points that you want to share with the audience, Steve? Probably the most exciting thing is that, you know, we've had enough time now to start to engage with a, a variety of customers. And, and I have to say that just kind of elaborating a bit on the uh, value proposition, I think companies that want to connect and view their assets will get bored quickly. In other words, they will get a bump in the value, but it will be a short period of time, and then they'll be left starving for what do I do next. So I think it's really important early on for companies to have a vision that says, look, if I do this right, I can kind of progress up the value chain to uh, broader applications, more thorough applications, more actionable information 
so that you can be able to manage and drive your, your organization and what's kind of happening. And so that's so important because it's really unlimited. We could take my simple example for a second with the uh, wind turbine, the wind farm. If you're bringing in that kind of information and we, you know, we know when to do maintenance, that's interesting, but it might also be interesting to correlate the weather cycles, it, the temperatures, the environment, some environment variables, humidity that might affect the performance. All of these things take what used to be a strict vertical and, and then allows them to say, wow, if I could combine this information with this information, which I could never do before, that creates a new innovative insight into your business. To me, that's what's unique about this. That's the real reason why I went to pursue my graduate degree in data science, because uh, from the industrial sense, I could see that we had certain data sets that were available. But what was mind-blowing to me is to look for patterns, you know, quantitative patterns and things that we, the human couldn't recognize before. And as you said, combining data sets that might be not considered like leading indicators of, of machine health, but rather sub-indicators or sub-priorities or something along that line. But patterns would emerge and I often, in the process industry, you know, you find that these batch failures were due to, like, a, for example, humidity, where it failed only once under all other parameters controlled. And then when they looked right. at that humidity data, they realized that's what happened. They tooled their production around the times that it was extremely humid in the southern state, you know, while making this batch right. capital product. Right. That's what gets me excited is, you know, to break new ground, to get new insights. That's right. That's right. That's what it's all about. It's an exciting time for us. I think we're getting uh, tremendous feedback and excitement around the solution. And I think uh, people see the benefits of having a Siemens and an AWS partner. That's great. I'll put some links to where people can find out about MindSphere and the development toolkit, like the development call to action. So. Yeah. People will be able to find that on, on show notes. Where else can people find you, Steve, if they ever wanted to reach out? The core site is siemens.mindsphere.io. If you go there, then you can learn all about the partner ecosystem. It's a unique opportunity for small companies to big companies. Fantastic. Thanks, Steve, for being on. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you.